This week, an old-time professional wrestler teaches you self-defense. Hi guys, my name is Joe and welcome to Fighting Words, the martial arts library. On this channel, I review martial arts books and talk about other martial arts related subjects. The subject of today's review is Self-Defense and Physical Fitness by Antonio Roca, published in 1965. As I mentioned, the author is a professional wrestler. Uh, Antonio Roca originally came from Argentina, and in the, the 50s and 60s um, did some professional wrestling, and he was known for his agility, and I think in particular his kicks. The thing is, in researching this book, I actually came across somebody else's you know, research on it, they were like, we're, we're not really sure if he had a martial arts background at all. <laughs> Didn't seem to have an amateur wrestling background. Um, I do think at this time, from what I understand, professional wrestlers were usually taught some fundamental, both amateur wrestling and what they would refer to as hooks. So what we would refer to as submissions. I don't doubt that during his time in the business or in training that he picked up some of this stuff. But outside of that, it's really sort of questionable where he actually learned anything that he's showing in here. So once we get into the book, one of the first things that we can see is that it's actually very brief. It's only about 75 pages. And actually most of it is spent on fitness. That's going to be the bulk of the book and it's going to be what's up front. Now, in the intro, Mr. Roca focuses on just general overall health advice. You know, he has advice for, you know, people who are overweight, people who are underweight. Uh, he briefly touches on, I don't, I don't think he uses the term overtraining, but he does address, is there such a thing as too much exercise? Yes, there is. And then he offers some insight into different athletic activities, like swimming, skating, rowing, and biking, and we'll talk about, you know, the types of muscles involved. You know, it says that rowing, for instance, is good for the arms and back and abs. Uh, the workout section itself is divided by body part, and it actually begins with a series of five warm-up exercises. You know, this includes, like, modified jumping jacks, uh, some breathing exercises, you know, things you might be familiar with already. Now, the exercises themselves are all body weight movements, so you don't need any equipment for any of this. Uh, they are a combination of calisthenics, mobility exercises, uh, there's some isometrics, there's a little bit of what we would call dynamic tension, so tensing up the muscles and then moving them through a range of motion. So it covers exercises for things like, you know, the arms and the back and the legs. Um, it's notable that he includes neck exercises. There's a few of those in there. And as someone in the world of professional wrestling, I'm sure he understood the importance of having a strong neck. Uh, he also includes what he refers to as waist exercises. Most of these look like they address lumbar mobility. So for like the, the lower back. Now, taking a look at some of these exercises, some of them do look like maybe they wouldn't be recommended today. Um, I, I am not a physical therapist, but I follow a few on YouTube. <laughs> you know, and there are certain dangers involved with, you know, how one stretches and how one twists the body and the, the speed at which one does those things. So... You hear before any exercise program that you should consult with your physician before beginning it. I think some of these in the, the ones that don't involve the, the waist exercises, I think most of those are pretty okay <laughs> for what we're doing now. There might be other exercises that we have now that are better. But it's really like the, the so-called waist exercises that, you know, as someone who's had some lower back issues, I take a look at some of those and I'm like, I'm not doing that. 
that's going to screw me up. So all that to say, if you decide to seek out this book, I found it on PDF. You can probably find it as well. When it comes to the exercises, especially if you have pre-existing back issues, maybe avoid some of them. You know, definitely run them by you know people who are more familiar with modern exercise routines. Despite that long cautionary diatribe I just gave, uh, I would actually say that a lot of what's included is still pretty good. You know, like we got things like squats and push-ups and. You know, he shows like one arm push-ups and, you know, again, exercises for the neck. So I think a lot of it is still really good. The self-defense section is remarkably brief and not particularly organized. Um, the intro gives some tips on how to practice and it discusses things like weapons of opportunity, you know, how to use the environment, you know, whether you're indoors or outdoors. And I think these provide some good concepts for self-defense, so not a bad start. Uh, one thing I've found is that a lot of these defenses will typically end with like a hip throw or back trip variation. So, you know, if you already have a judo background, a lot of these are going to be familiar to you. A lot of the defenses also include some pain compliant stuff. You know, some of it's definitely not pain. Like the, the very first thing he shows is, you know, like making fists so that your thumb stick out and jamming it into the guy's eyes. <laughs> so that, that doesn't have a whole lot to do with pain. I mean, it's going to hurt a lot, but also it's hard for blind people to fight. <laughs> Except if they've already got a hold of you. You can see that in the Paralympics. Some of his attacks are very specific. Uh, interestingly to me, for instance, someone's got you in a front bear hug. It's weird to me that the guy's doubled over and has this waist grab. Because usually we see a bear hug from someone who's upright and has grabbed you. Um, and then some of his other... The attacks that he presents, you know, the, the attacker doing wind up being a little bit vague, like, you know, here's an attack from the side. Like, what kind of attack? Is it a grab? Is it a punch? Is, you know, that, that might matter. <laughs> Toward the end, he covers a little bit about, you know, defense against weapons threats, and he's got a little bit on multiple attackers. I would say any demo involving multiple attackers is... Is always a little bit questionable because fighting one person can be chaotic. Fighting more than one person is going to like exponentially increase that chaos. Uh, he does show like throwing one attacker into another, which I think is interesting. I've actually been part of a a drill where it, it was multiple attacker defense drills. You know, we had pads and we were going after a guy, and pretty much the only thing he knew was a single leg. But he kept, like, single-legging us in each other's way so that he could create space and move. So the idea behind that, I don't know if it would be easy to pull off, but I have seen it work in person. So maybe not a bad thing. As far as the pros go, um, I think it helps that it's brief. It's very concise. I think... It's good to to have body weight conditioning stuff around, you know. We don't always have access to a gym or exercise equipment. So, you know, I, I appreciate that the workout stuff, the, the fitness stuff, is body weight based. Again, going back to the fitness stuff, uh, it really does have the beginner in mind, like, throughout the book. I do think that it benefits from being organized into different sections. You know, like, this is for the abs, this is for the arms. So, you know, you can find that in modern books too, but I do think it benefits this book in particular. Uh, as far as the cons, there really isn't a whole lot of detail when it comes to the self-defense techniques. Uh, I also see some of those as being questionable. You know, he's got one where he's like, 
you know, basically you pinch the guy's upper lip between your the knuckles of your first and second fingers and pull really hard and like I, I don't know if that would stop me. <laughs> I, I doubt that it would. So, I, I've definitely seen better stuff when it comes to self-defense. As far as recommendations go, uh, as I mentioned, I found this on PDF. I imagine that my viewers can as well. In which case, again, check out some of the body weight exercises. You know, it's, I wouldn't consider it these days to be a full and complete program, but I know that I get bored with routine a lot, so I appreciate having different exercises to add a little bit of variety to what you're doing in your fitness. Uh, I also think if you're a fan of professional wrestling, Again, this guy was an old school wrestler. This is sort of a novelty to have, to sort of, you know, see what this guy had to say about the subjects of physical fitness and self-defense. Anyway, that's all I have for today, and I thank you for watching. Uh, if you would like to support the channel, or if you have any suggestions for other books for me to review, or any other subjects you'd like me to talk about, please consider donating to my coffee account. A link to that is going to be in the description. And... Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.